Alexander Povetkin knocks Johan Duopa out cold with a very impressive double left hook in the sixth round. He battered Duopa throughout the fight from start to finish and closed the show in clinical and very impressive fashion. In fact, that finishing move was reminiscent of Mike Tyson. And don't get it twisted here, Tyson fanboys. I'm not trying to say that Povetkin is on the level of a Tyson, but what I am saying is Tyson used to throw punches in a very similar fashion to that double left hook that Povetkin threw. And in fact, Povetkin was trained for a time by Teddy Atlas, who was Mike Tyson's original trainer, or one of his original trainers anyway. And I'm sure, in fact, I've, I know because I've been observing this in Povetkin, that some of Atlas's teachings have stuck with Povetkin and he still implements a lot of the things that Teddy Atlas showed him. So yes, it was an impressive display by Alexander Povetkin, but we have to bear in mind that Johan Duopa was clearly out of shape. He took the fight on less than 24 hours notice. He was so ill-prepared that he didn't even have a pair of boxing boots. He fought in a pair of running shoes for this fight. He was scheduled to fight his countrymen on January 28th or 29th, I believe, Carlos Takam. So he may have just began training camp for the Takam fight in the past week or so. Or maybe he hadn't even started it, I don't know. But clearly just from the look of his body, he wasn't in any, any kind of condition to be fighting. And Alexander Povetkin obviously was because he'd had a long, extensive, professional, high-level training camp. So that's what happens when you take fights at short notice and <laughs> you ain't had no training and the other guy has. You can get blitzed just like Johan Duopa did. But I guess he felt like, you know what, I need a bit of extra money for Christmas. This opportunity is too good to pass up. So let me go ahead and do it. Now, there's a lot of controversy surrounding this fight. Povetkin, as we all know now, failed a drug test. His second drug test that he's failed so far this year in the past 24 hours. And a lot of people are saying, how was the fight allowed to go ahead when he failed a drug test? Well, the WBC withdrew their sanctioning of the bout, which is why Stavern decided to withdraw himself from the fight because he didn't want to participate in an untitled bout, he's interested in getting revenge on Deontay Wilder. And in order to get the opportunity to do that, he was looking to become the WBC interim heavyweight champion and then have that rematch with Wilder. But now the WBC, but since the WBC withdrew their sanctioning of the fight, Stavern withdrew himself. So in step Duopa. Now, Varda are the organization who did the drug testing for this fight. And they found Povetkin sample to be uh, dirty, let's just say that. They can only make recommendations, Vada. They can't force whatever commission to do anything. They can only recommend. So they, I'm assuming, recommended that the WBC withdraw their sanctioning for the fight or whatever the case may be. Maybe they didn't. The WBC might have done that off their own bat. They may have also recommended that the Russian Boxing Commission don't sanction the fight because the fight was uh, set to take place in Russia. Well, the, the Povetkin Duopa fight did take place in Russia. They might have recommended that the Russian Commission don't sanction it, but the Russian Commission can do what they like. They don't have to heed the advice of VADA, the Voluntary Anti Doping Agency. And they clearly didn't, if indeed that information was, uh, that recommendation was given to them. You just got to look at the promoter of Alexander Povetkin, the guy who put on this show, Mr. Rabinsky. He is a very, very powerful man. This guy is a billionaire. And when somebody like him is bankrolling a show like this and he's invested a lot of money, it seems unlikely that the Russian commission would turn around and say, actually, no, Povetkin failed a drug test, so we can't allow you to go ahead with this show. <laughs> that seems unlikely. So that's what the case is. In terms of international boxing, with regards to the WBC and many, many of the other sanctioning bodies, Povetkin may get frozen out now because of this second failed drug test. And again, just to emphasize, you've got a situation here where a potential serial drug cheat 
has just stepped into the ring and been allowed to fight against a guy who has had no training and is coming off however long it was since his last fight, has had no training and only less than 24 hours notice. A lot of people are horrified that such a situation could be allowed to unfold. But it has been allowed to unfold and it is what it is. Um, sad state of affairs. Duopa, I guess he gets his Christmas bonus. <laughs> hope, he, hope he got paid well for that because he did get knocked out cold, carried out the ring or whatever it was. I, I didn't see him actually get carried out the ring, but he was in a bad state when I, when I saw him go down in his uh, running shoes. <laughs> so hopefully that Christmas bonus will cushion the blow a little bit and uh, he'll be able to do his thing. Although I don't know if he'll be able to fight Carlos Takam in January. In most countries, when a fighter suffers a knockout, they have their uh, ability to compete suspended for a certain number of days. Sometimes it's two, three months. So I don't know if the Opa versus Takam will happen now. Uh, let me know what you felt about the performance and let me know what you feel about the controversy surrounding it. All right? Shaboy Hatman, I'm out.